Free transfers in football are seen as somewhat of a cheat code because a club doesn't have to even negotiate with the player's former team. All they have to do is to convince the player to sign their contract and not worry about a transfer fee. From the outside looking in, this seems easy enough, but some of these transfers tend to not actually be as free as they seem. What a club doesn't spend on a transfer, they end up spending on wages or a signing bonus, and these figures add up. Let's take a look at some of the most expensive free transfers ever. First up, we have a move that's still on everyone's lips. Kylian Mbappe to Real Madrid. This transfer should have been worth 150 million euros for PSG, but they ended up getting nothing. Guess where that money is going? Straight into Mbappe's pocket. The Frenchman will earn a hefty amount as a signing bonus from Los Blancos, alongside securing his image rights. We wouldn't be surprised if PSG starts tying down their players on eight-year contracts like Chelsea has done. This sucks so much for them. In 2021, PSG themselves acquired the services of a little-known player by the name of Lionel Messi. The transfer was a huge deal for Paris, who were looking to create the greatest attack ever seen on paper. After Barca decided against renewing his contract, he joined PSG and received a 25 million euro signing bonus while also taking a cut of player image rights. In just six months at the club, PSG were able to surpass their past year revenue in large part due to his jersey sales, so it's safe to say Messi took home a very large chunk of money from that. Smart business from the Argentinian. When Arsenal let Aaron Ramsey leave on a free transfer back in 2019, the Gunners couldn't have possibly matched the kind of money the old lady were offering. Juventus were trying to win the Champions League and saw the Welshman as an important piece to that. As such, they were willing to offer him a salary of £400,000 a week, making him the highest paid British player ever. It was only second to Ronaldo at the club and something he surely couldn't say no to. Because of this, he decided it would be better to run down his contract at the Gunners, who weren't willing to offer him even half that amount, eventually signing his pre-contract in January before leaving in the summer. He remained in Italy until 2022, when, after having felt the constraints of Covid, Juventus had to lessen their wage bill massively. When United acquired the services of Alexi Sanchez, no one could have seen the massive headache it would eventually cause. In a swap deal with Arsenal where Mkhitaryan went the opposite direction, United got him for free but paid a massive price every week he was at the club. The Chilean became the highest paid player in the Premier League and due to bonuses and incentives took home almost €500,000 per week. It would have been okay if he'd have paid that off on the field but he turned into one of the biggest flops the club had ever seen. It also led to unrest among players which forced United to give De Gea a crazy new contract while also letting Ander Herrera leave because he wanted a pay rise. After spending two seasons there, United were more than happy to let him leave for free after the chaos he had caused. After agreeing to terminate his contract with Manchester United six months early, Cristiano Ronaldo left the European game after two decades to sign for Al Nasser. The 37-year-old joined the Saudi Pro League club on a two-and-a-half-year deal running until 2025. His basic salary is worth 71 million euros. But image rights and commercial deals, not least an added ambassadorial role in Saudi Arabia's bid for the 2030 World Cup, take it to 200. 3 million euros a year, over half a billion if he sees out his full contract and plays into his 40s. We doubt the Saudi club feels the sting whatsoever though. David Alaba saw the opportunity to move to a better environment and earn more money at Real Madrid, and therefore let his buying contract expire. He quickly received a pay rise to almost 20 million euros, while also taking home an 18 million signing bonus. He didn't forget those close to him either, as his agent, Pinny's Zahavi received 5.2 million euros as a commission fee, while his father, George Alaba, got 6.3 million euros. 29 years old at the time, Madrid surely spent the same amount or even more than they would have if they bought him from the German club. Two Champions League wins since then and not many within Los Blancos can be too upset. A few seasons later, Real Madrid lost the services of their brand new Ballon d'Or winner when Karim Benzema decided against extending his 
his contract to join Saudi team Al Ittihad. After Ronaldo's move, Europe began seeing the Saudi league as a legitimate threat in acquiring the services of the best players in the world. In a show of their power, the Frenchman's salary was more than tripled when he agreed to earn over 100 million euros a year, second only to Al Nasser's number seven. Again, we doubt that they really felt that number either, but it was still a crazy amount to pay for a 35-year-old free transfer. We hope from these seven players that you can now see that a free transfer isn't always free. Before we go, here's a little quiz for you. Who was the player who, after taking his club to court, successfully changed the law to allow free transfers to happen? Let us know in the comments. Remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to turn on bell notifications so that you never miss out on any new videos. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye!